Um, again, a still life is an arrangement of objects that cannot move on their own. And um, let's look at some famous still lifes. We've got which is a still life and how do you know? We know this is a still life because it's an arrangement of objects that can't move on their own. A very funny calorie composition, a beautiful floral arrangement with McDonald's just to make you chuckle over there. This is the still life. It's an arrangement of flowers by Vincent van Gogh. This is a landscape by van Gogh. So the same artist, but different kind of subject matter. A landscape is um, an area of land as the artist sees it and a still life being an arrangement of objects that cannot move on their own. Flowers can be in a landscape, but this is not a picture of the outdoors. So, still life. Then we've got um, these over here. We've got an arrangement of fruit that they painted and put barcodes on. The artist is making a, a comment on how processed foods are in the stores nowadays. And then this art that's slowly loading over here, the Lady of Shalott, is a beautiful painting by John William Waterhouse that shows a woman in a boat. Definitely not a still life because she can move on her own. Fruit cannot. Still life. Arrangement of objects that cannot move on their own. Now today, during class, I thought it might be fun if we create our own cactus still life. Now we're going to think about the elements of art and principles of design as we create our art. Again, elements of art and principles of design. Elements of art, we're going to be using line and shape to make our drawing. Line and shape. Um, lots of different kinds of lines on our pot here too. Uh, we're also going to be thinking of the texture of the cacti. Cactuses or cacti have lots of little prickles. So we're going to make it appear that they have, that, that our drawing has that texture too. Um, and we're going to be using space. Uh, we're going to have some overlapping shapes to make our, our 2D flat drawing look like it's got more depth, a deepness to it. Um, and we're going to have a foreground. Foreground is what's in the front of our picture with our little pot of cacti and a background, our uh, table and wall back there. So we're going to be thinking of those elements of art as we create our cactus still life. Line, shape, color, I didn't mention, of course color, every color of the rainbow if you want. Um, texture and space. Now principles of design, we also want to have variety. Variety is when you have lots of different kinds of things. Different sized, different shaped cactuses, different kinds of lines, different kinds of colors. We want lots of variety. And we're going to be thinking of pattern when we create some line work on our pot too. Um, and then we'll have emphasis. Emphasis is where does your eye go to? We're going to have our, uh, the, our, the viewer is going to have their eye go right to our pot of cacti. So emphasis, where's your eye go? To our pot of cactuses. Uh, pattern, we have lots of pattern on our pot. And variety, lots of color, lots of shape, lots of line, different kinds of sizes, variety. All right, so with all that in mind, grab a piece of paper, or you can work on klecky.com like I am. Um, so you're going to need a paper and then markers or crayons because we are going to be using some color later on. Now the first thing I'm going to do when I start my drawing is think about size. We want the size and proportion to be the right size and proportion of our shapes. We don't want this tiny little pot floating on a page. No, we want to emphasize this cactus and pot, which means they need to be really big. So we're going to start by finding the middle of our page. Put a little dot right in the middle of your paper. Ta -da! We're going to draw a long, flat oval. That's going to be this part of the pot right here with our pencil. Use a pencil right now. So I'm going to make a big oval. Take normal, almost the whole page. I'm going to leave a little space on either side of my oval, but there's my oval, and that's going to be the top of my pot. Now I want you to go ahead and don't make a dot at the very bottom of your page, but move up a little bit and put another dot. That's going to be the bottom of your pot. And if you look at this pot, it's wider on the top than it is at the bottom. It's a little bit skinnier on the bottom. So you're going to put two sides to this pot. One, and it's coming angling in so that it's smaller on the bottom there. And two. And don't worry about it being perfect, guys. Art is not about making perfect, perfect stuff. It's about having fun and problem solving as you go. Good artists are good problem solvers. And that's really what we're practicing in our class, how to solve problems, visual problems. But if you're good at solving visual problems, problems that you see with your eyes, 
I bet you'd be a good problem solver with all sorts of things in life too. There's our pot. One long skinny oval, two sides coming in diagonally, and a little bit of a curvy bottom. Now's when you get to play with line. This child, when they made their art, used zigzag lines, curvy lines, dotted lines, checkered lines, triangles, all sorts of lines. Oh my goodness. So think about what, maybe you want wavy lines, but what we definitely want is a variety of lines. I'm going to start with a squiggly wiggly line. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do some circles. Have fun with whatever design you want on your pot. Just make sure that you have a variety of lines, all different kinds of lines. We don't want boring in class. No, no, no. Uh, I'm going to try a straight-ish curvy line. Curvy because that pot is curvy, but straight because I'm imagining it as a straight line. Um, and now I'm going to do zigzag. Have fun with your lines, guys. And another straight line connecting so they look like triangles. And I'm going to do another double zigzag. Zig, 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 zig. Zag. I'm happy with that. Alrighty. Once you're happy with the lines and designs on your pot, it is time to think about our cacti in here. Um, now, I know I'm going fast, so this is a video. If you need to pause this at any time, you pause, work on your drawing, and then press play when you're ready. All right? I'm not, I'm not even super happy with my lines because I'm just rushing, 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 trying to get this done so that you can see this video before class ends. But if I was really trying to do my best, I'd be taking my time. And you are more than welcome to take your time. Now that we have this pot and it's taking up half of our page, we've got plenty of room here for our cactuses or cacti. I always forget. I know cacti is definitely one way to say more than one cactus, but I think you can say cactuses too, but I'm not sure. We'd have to use the dictionary. All right, let's see. So if you look, we've got a tall cactus, a double round cactus, one little round cactus, and a cactus that's kind of like, more like, this is more like an aloe plant, I think, with these long skinny lines. You can even draw one big cactus if you want. Take a look at this art here. This kid drew a ton. This kid drew less. Maybe you want to make a cactus that's really big and has a bunch of arms. Like that. It's your call. You're the artist. You decide what you want to do. I'm going to make one similar to this where I have some overlapping shapes. So I'm going to start by, again, you're using your pencil and you're going to use a light. Don't press as dark as me. I'm on a computer, so it's easy for me to erase any mistakes I make. But if you're using a pencil, don't press so hard that you can't erase. Because we are going to need to erase. Let's say you make a big uh, upside down U shape for that tall cactus. You're going to want to erase where that cactus goes in front of the pot. So make sure that your lines aren't so dark you can't erase some of them. Because we're thinking of space, overlapping shapes in space. And this cactus would be inside the pot, which means it would be in front of that back line of the pot. I know, confusing. All right, so then we've got this little cactus, and i got to draw the bottom of him or her. It. It is a plant, Mrs. Shano. All right, so there's the bottom. Now, if you look, we've got some curved and then straight lines going down the side, and then we have to put little V shapes for the prickles. So I'm going to put, I'm going to start at this top point. I'm going to curve over and down to the bottom. Stop. And then I'm going to go the opposite way, over and down to the bottom and stop. And again, if you look at this finished artwork, little tiny V's make the perfect little prickles. One, two, three, and that, oh, that line work there just makes such interesting variety of line on our cactus. All of a sudden, that boring shape is not boring at all. Still lifes are objects that can't move on their own, but that doesn't mean, mean they need to be boring. We can play with color and shape and line. It's just going to be a really fun work of art when this is done. Whether you finish it or you only start it, it's going to look like fun. All right, so there's all my little prickles. Now I need a 
maybe one or two or even three or four, it's, it's up to you, uh, other cactuses here, cacti. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a round cactus. I'm going to put this double cactus right here. Boop, boop. And I'm going to overlap it, which means part of my cactus is going to be on top and crisscrossing with this cactus I already drew. And I'll just erase where they overlap. So I'm going to draw a roundish, not perfectly round, because very few cactuses in nature are perfectly round. I've got kind of a blob here. And the top blob will go and crisscross on top of this other blob. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to draw another shape on top. And it's kind of covering that part. Now is when I get out my eraser. So I have that cactus. I have two circles overlapping. But we have to think before we erase. When I erase, I know that this cactus is in front of that one. So I'm not going to see the pot. Bye bye pot. At this part. Bye bye. And I'm not going to see this part of the cactus because it would be behind this, this front cactus. So I'm going to erase here. Now, I have to decide which cactus part is on top. This one's on top of this one. So this top part's going to hide the top of this guy. So I'm going to erase this part. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I'm going to erase that cactus, this prickly one we already drew, because he is hiding behind this smaller cactus as well. And now, with those lines erased, this shape looks like it's in front of this cactus and in front of the back of the pot which gives the, the trick, the eye trick, an illusion of this being a 3D space, of it being deep, of it taking up space in the world. Now we need to put some curvy lines, kind of like a pumpkin, but with prickles, on our little double cactus. So we're going to curve this way. And, oop, I don't like that line. I want to connect it top to bottom. Curve this way. I'm going to curve the opposite way. Curve this way. Curve the opposite way. And then I have to do the same thing on little top cactus. Curve this way. So you're going to follow the curve closest to it. So if I'm on this side and I'm closest to this curve, I'm going to follow that curve. That's how the rules of pumpkins and cactuses go. Whoop. Whoop. And then he has such a cute little fluff on top. If you want to go ahead and make a little fluff, go ahead. You just poke in and out. Out and in, in and out. There he is. Now... I'm going to do this little guy and this guy. I'm going the opposite way of this picture. But maybe you're drawing different shapes or drawing it just like this one. You're the artist. You decide. Again, we're thinking of overlapping space. I want this guy to be behind this one. So I'm just going to draw part of him, just kind of poking out. Whoop. Done. All I need to erase now is where I see that, that little, um, what's it called? Pot. Wow. Couldn't think of the word pot. So I'm going to erase him. Bye-bye. 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 And then we just need to put those curvy lines and then the prickles on him and the prickles on him because we forgot the prickles. And by we, I mean me. Curvy. Curvy. All right. Time for prickles. Again, little tiny bees on every little area of your cactus. Every single line, every curved line, you're going to put your little V-shaped pricklies. Take your time. Don't rush like me. It doesn't have to be perfect, though. Don't take so long that you can't finish because you're just so nervous about making a mistake that it takes you super long. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. My goodness, I'm in my 30s, and I make mistakes every day. You're never too young or too old for mistakes, but you are always too old to be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to try. All righty. So this guy is just going to be, Mr. Alloplant is going to have just tall, skinny lines. I'm going to draw one, two, and don't, don't, don't say, Miss Shannon, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Just draw some wonky, weird lines. Don't, don't make them straight. This plant doesn't have straight, straight leaves or whatever these things are, whatever you call them. Um, Go ahead and make a few, though. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six of them. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six also. Look at that. I'm doing pretty good matching their drawing. I'm just going to erase where my, my leaves overlap with that pot. 
and they put some fun, again, texture, little circles to show the texture of those leaves. Maybe it's not an alloplant. Maybe it is some sort of cactus. I just don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and put those little details on my leaves. That texture just adds so much more interest to my art. It's just more interesting, more fun to look at. And then we're going to put some pebbles down in this pot. Pebble, pebble, pebble. Just scatter them about. Don't worry about them being all even or in a certain kind of place. Okay. Whether you're where I am or not, no big deal. Pause it if you're not. Catch up. Um, I'm going to put a line for my table and then I'm going to add color. I'm going to color like lightning because I'm on my computer and I can color really fast. You take your time if you're on paper. Make it pretty. Don't stress, but have fun with color. So let me get my colors out. I'm gonna start adding color, lots of color on my pot. I'm gonna just, every color of the rainbow, just like that artist did there. Red, orange, yellow, I want green, I want blue, dark blue, and of course some purple. Ah, not like that, Mrs. Shano. Purple. All right, I'm going to grab some brown for the dirt. Have fun coloring this in, guys. This is a very colorful work of art. I'm going to make the cactuses different colors, too. Nice light green for this big cactus. Maybe I'll do a darker green. Ooh, no, my God. A darker green for the little guy and a medium green for the double cactus. We'll see. It's, I keep doing that. There we go. Let me pick a deeper green. I'm going to do this guy a, a darker green than the other one. If you only have one green, make them all green. That's that one green. That's fine. I'm just, I can pick as many greens as I want on my computer. And maybe you have an art kit with lots of greens. Or maybe you have markers that have two or three different colored greens. Or a crayon box that has a couple different greens. Have fun with different colors. All right. Uh, I'm going to make that little floof red. Bam. Uh, let's see. I want a really dark green for my cactus back here, I think. And back to my lighter green for my plant right here with the pointy leaves, whatever this cactus or aloe plant is. Now, I definitely want a background that's really, really good at contrasting with these greens. Contrast is when something's really different, opposite. The opposite color of green is red. So if I pick like a pink or a red, it just really makes my art pop. Look how much that popped putting some, some pinkish red back there. And then this floor down here, they made theirs brown. I don't feel like brown today. I think I want a really fun orange color. That makes me happy. And that, boys and girls, is our still life for the day. Pause it where you need to. Move along when you're ready. Um, just have fun making a still life all your own of a fun, Pot of little cacti. I'm trying to mess with it and I'm just not liking some of my lines. I had fun drawing with you guys. I'm really proud of how far you, you're coming with your drawing skills, friends. I can't wait to see some of your cactuses or cacti when you're done. I'm going to check in with you and see what you've made if I'm there in class with you. Uh, and if not, definitely do your best and hang it up when you're done because you are an amazing artist. I'll see you guys next time. Have fun drawing.